I wish I could improv a better intro to this, but here we are. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 improvised movie moments. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. That means we're looking at movie scenes or lines that were ad-libbed or changed in the heat of the moment by the actor. All right, let's see some improv. Number 20, show tune, The Warriors. For the Coney Island confrontation between this film's rival gangs, director Walter Hill wanted David Patrick Kelly's character Luther to taunt the Warriors from his 55 Cadillac, and he gave him free reign to do it any way he wanted. Kelly clinked three bottles together in one hand and delivered the legendary sing-song taunt that we've come to know. Warriors, come out to play. According to Kelly, it was a childhood bully that inspired the chant. It also helps that he's a musician blessed with the singing chops for the line. Warriors, come out to play. Warriors, come out to play. Number 19, just kicking it, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Showbiz is dangerous. During a particularly emotional scene in the adaptation of Tolkien's trilogy, Viggo Mortensen's character Aragorn breaks down when he comes to the realization that two of his hobbit friends might be dead, and he expresses himself by kicking a nearby helmet. Turns out his breakdown was not only emotional, but also physical, because after too many takes of kicking solid metal, he broke two toes. And then he let out the scream. I thought, wow, this is strong. I mean, this is like Aragorn is like just in total grief at, at what's just happened to the Merry and Pippin. This is really cool. And he didn't say anything to us, but we found out that Vigo had actually broken two toes with that last kick. The shot chosen for the final cut of the film was the toe breaker, because you can't fake the intensity of the actor's excruciating pain. Vigo actually feeling that pain, he actually turned that into performance. Yeah. Number 18, the barn story, Saving Private Ryan. He's working on this bra and he's trying to get it off and all of a sudden John just screams out. Danny, you're a young man, don't do it. Matt Damon only shows up towards the end of this epic war film and he's so preoccupied with survival, we barely get to know his character, except in this scene, which was improvised by the actor. She screams and she jumps up and she tries to get running out of the barn, but she's still got this shirt over her head. She goes running right into the wall and knocks herself out. <laughs> so now Dan is just so mad at us. As Ryan and Captain Miller quietly await more fighting, Private Ryan reminisces about his lost brothers in a spontaneous tale. He loses the shovel, goes out of his grasp, and hits a kerosene lantern. The thing explodes. The whole barn almost goes up because of this thing. Ugh. <laughs> Damon obviously thinks the story is as funny as we do, but once he realizes it's the last time his family was together, the scene takes on a bittersweet feel, made all the more impressive when you remember it was ad-libbed. That was, Dan went off to basic the next day. That was the last night the four of us were together. Number 17, The Zit, Animal House. See if you can guess what I am now. When a director gives a comedian like John Belushi a little wiggle room, anything can happen, but it's almost guaranteed to be funny. John Landis knew that when Bluto began dumping food onto his tray, something magical might occur, so he let the cameraman follow him for the rest of the scene. Everything Belushi did in the cafeteria was unscripted, and since the cast and crew weren't in on his joke or its disgusting punchline, the reactions captured on camera were real. I'm a zit. Get it? It's classic Belushi, and possibly the flick's most famous scene. Number 16, chest waxing and gay jokes, the 40-year-old virgin. Some say a comic is only as good as his ability to improvise. By that logic, this film features some stellar comedians, as it has many unscripted moments, including Steve Carell's genuine pain-induced curses at having his very hairy chest waxed. Freddy Pyle! Skomaziyama! No! Kelly Clarkson! On top of that, Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen's gay joke barbs were completely off the cuff. You know, I know you're gay. You just told me you're not sleeping with women anymore. And if you're a fan of the you know how I know you're gay back and forths, you should check out the extended DVD scenes, where the two try to outdo each other for several minutes. All ad-libbed, of course. You know how I know you're gay? How? Yeah. You like Coldplay. Number 15, Roy Batty's monologue, Blade Runner. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? 
That's what it is to be a slave. It's completely natural for actors to tweak their lines for a monologue, but rarely do they go beyond grammar or sentence structure to resonate this much with the character and audience. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. Though there were previous scripted versions of this soliloquy, Rutger Hauer mainly improv the depth and philosophical musings of Roy Batty's last words, and gave us even more reason to ask the question, what is human? All those moments will be lost in time. Like <clears throat> tears in rain. It might sound a little cheesy on paper, but it isn't when it's delivered as a replicant leader's dramatic final epiphany. Time to die. Number 14, Sword to a Gunfight, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Actors aren't immune to travel troubles, and even a tough guy like Harrison Ford submitted to dysentery while filming Raiders in Tunisia. That's a big reason this scene was altered. Originally, Indy was supposed to engage the show off swordsman in a choreographed sword fight where the adventurous archaeologist would disarm him with his whip. But Ford was sick and just wanted to shoot the guy. <laughs> Though it wasn't improvised while cameras rolled, that move impacted the franchise in a big way. And the scene is one of the series' most iconic and hilarious moments. Number 13, the most annoying sound in the world, Dumb and Dumber. Hear it. You're at quitsies! Any quitsies? You're at quitsies. No, any quitsies, no startsies. You can't do that! As Dum Dums, Harry and Lloyd head on their cross country road trip, they meet all sorts of people, including a hitman who's trying to kill them. We usually don't pick up hitchhikers, but I'm gonna go with my instinct on this one. Saddle up, partner! Well, sucks to be that guy, because car rides with these two mean sing alongs, anti quitsies, and the most annoying sound in the world. She's gonna buy, She's gonna me, buy a me a fucking bird. That last one was injected into the film by Jim Carrey on the fly, and you can see in Jeff Daniels' reaction that he was not expecting it. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? Fellas, you think we could listen to the radio or something? Even the hitman's outburst was unscripted, proving that sometimes unplanned is best. Number 12, look out Bello, Tarzan the Ape Man. Jane. 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 You? Jane. Jane. And you? You. Tarzan. This jungle-living ape man originated in a series of Edgar Rice Burroughs novels, where his signature sound was described as, quote, the victory cry of the bull ape. When it came to bringing that noise to the screen, Olympic swimmer and once competitive yodeler Johnny Weissmuller was the first actor to succeed where others had failed. <laughs> Tasked with inventing a call to summon his jungle crew, Weissmuller, and apparently some Hollywood sound editing trickery, combined to create one of the most celebrated, imitated, reused, and easily recognized sound bites in film history. <laughs> Number 11, I Got a Jar of Dirt, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. I'll handle this, mate. When Jack Sparrow was given the jar of dirt, he was unsure of its power, but when he comes face to face with Davy Jones and the Flying Dutchman, he can't help but flaunt it a little. The script simply had Jack Sparrow calling Davy Jones names with some schoolyard level taunting, but that didn't sit well with Johnny Depp. The reactions of the rest of the actors are genuine confusion and surprise, as Depp falls down the stairs, only to get up and sing the infectious little ditty to further taunt Jones. I got a jar of dirt, I got a jar of dirt, and guess what's inside it? Enough! Number 10, Singing in the Rain, A Clockwork Orange. Always a perfectionist, Stanley Kubrick shot and reshot the scene where the main group of droogs engages in their brand of ultraviolence, which in this case involved beating and gang rape. But the scene still felt empty, so Kubrick instructed actor Malcolm McDowell to inject a little spontaneity. 
which he did to the tune of Singing in the Rain. And I'm ready for the Taking this classic old song and twisting it into such a creepy scene turns out to be a terrifying blend of happiness and evil, and one that will be seared into our brains forever. From the place comes forth, along with the rain. Number 9. Hey, I'm walking here. Midnight Cowboy. Though there's some debate about whether the scene was actually unscripted, it's still a memorable movie moment that Dustin Hoffman claims to have improvised. He and John Voight are walking NYC streets discussing the ins and outs of the gigolo business when BAM! A taxi works its way into the shot, almost running Hoffman down and prompting him to deliver the endlessly quotable line, And that's where old Daniel comes in, you know what I mean? Hey, hey, I'm walking here! I'm walking here! Up yours, you son of a bitch! You don't talk me that way! Get out of here! Hoffman has said that while he uttered those iconic words, what he really wanted to say was, hey, we're making a movie here. But method acting's his game, so he stayed in character the entire time. Don't worry about that. Actually, that ain't a bad way to pick up insurance, you know. Number 8. Boat Envy, Jaws. This ain't just any shark. Chief Brody knows it, and so did the actor playing him. In fact, Roy Scheider was the one who came up with the film's most famous line off the cuff. The first time we actually get a look at the giant Great White, Scheider decided to cut the tension with a one-liner that earned its spot in the annals of film history. You're gonna need a bigger boat. He didn't come up with the phrase on the spot, though. It was actually a common saying on the set. As the story goes, the film's producers didn't spring for a big enough barge to hold all the equipment. So, saying you're gonna need a bigger boat became a running joke among crew members. You're gonna need a bigger boat, right? Number 7. Mirror Image, Taxi Driver Martin Scorsese encourages actors to contribute to his films, and this is one case where he hit pay dirt. The script read, Travis speaks to himself in the mirror. Robert De Niro turned those instructions into one of the most famous and oft-quoted sequences in cinema history. You talking to me? Perfectly capturing Travis Bickle's loneliness and alienation, this scene has been cited as the one that says the most about his flawed personality. It's gone on to be referenced time and time again in movies and TV shows alike. Have you seen your father? You talking to me? What are you, Robert De Niro? Yes, I am talking to you. Number six, funny how. Goodfellas. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> really funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> what do you mean I'm funny? <laughs> Even if you've never seen this flick, there's one scene you surely know. Scorsese again allowed actors to invent dialogue, which he would retroactively add into the script. And Joe Pesci nabbed an Oscar by showing he could turn on a dime. You know, you, it's, you're just funny. It's, <laughs> you know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how? Not only does his improvised diatribe explain his character, it also stops his buddies dead in their tracks and has audiences holding their breath. He manages to keep the tension going just long enough to really emphasize the humor when he finally lets up and admits he's joking. I almost had him! I almost had him! Stuttering, yeah, stuttering prick yet? Frankie, was he shaking? Number 5. Hopkins is hysterical, The Silence of the Lambs. Closer, please. Closer. Sir Anthony Hopkins is still haunting our dreams with his portrayal of cannibalistic serial killer Dr. Hannibal Lecter, and the scene where he's introduced is arguably his creepiest. And yes, we're counting the muzzle. The mounting tension and quiet hostility between Hannibal and Clarice is palpable, and one sound sums it up best. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Call it a hiss, a slurp, whatever. Hopkins invented it on the spot to spook Clarice, creeping us all out at the same time. We'll never be able to get this eerie moment out of our heads, and for that, he more than deserves his Oscar. Number 4. Major Malfunction – Full Metal Jacket Why, well, you little maggot! You make me want to vomit! What's the best way to portray how brutal drill instructors are? Hire a real one, obviously. Stanley Kubrick originally enlisted ex-Marine R. Lee Ermey as a consultant for his war flick, thinking he wasn't vicious enough for the drill sergeant role. You had best un yourself or I will unscrew your head and shit down your neck! But Ermey proved him wrong, and wound up chewing out recruits for almost 40 minutes straight as Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. You are pukes. You are the lowest form of life on Earth. You are not even human f***ing being. Oh, and he invented about half of his own dialogue, spouting one-of-a-kind insults and unique nicknames left and right. From now on, you're Gomer Pyle! 
Sir, yes, sir. Do you think I'm cute, Private Powell? Do you think I'm funny? Sir, no, sir. Then wipe that disgusting grin off your face. Sir, yes, sir. One thing is for sure. We would not want to be on the receiving end of one of his rants. Number three, blood, sweat, and smears. Django Unchained. Would you be so kind as to collect the pistol hanging off these boys' hips here? Thank you ever so much. When injured on the job, most people would take a 30-second breather before continuing with their day. Not Leonardo DiCaprio. He got so into character for Django Unchained that when he slammed his hand down onto a table during a tense scene, smashing a glass and cutting his hand so badly he required stitches, he just kept right on with his racist rant. Now lay your palm flat on that tabletop! If you lift those palms off that turtle shell tabletop, Mr. Pooch is gonna let loose with both barrels that sawed off. Apparently, the room erupted into a standing ovation after the take. DiCaprio even worked the blood into the scene by smearing it across an obviously horrified Kerry Washington's face. If y'all think my price for this here <laughs> is too steep, oh! what I'm gonna desire to do is. <gasps> Number two, here's Johnny, The Shining. Mirroring the plot of this Stephen King adaptation, Stanley Kubrick caused the downward mental spiral of some of his actors, mainly Shelley Duvall. Helping him along was Jack Nicholson, who improved the film's shining moment. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. After chasing his family into a bathroom, Jack borrows a popular late-night catchphrase to add comedy and creepiness to the scene. Here's Johnny! <laughs> Channeling Ed McMahon in horrifying fashion, he riled Duvall up so much her screams started to become real. <laughs> Here's a tip, never play hide and seek with Jack Nicholson. Honestly, can you imagine improvising a line as iconic as Here's Johnny? What could possibly top that? Well, we'll find out soon, right after these honorable mentions, which are also pretty iconic to be honest. Oh, Dude. Holy shit. How much is this stuff inside? That's uh, about $2,000 an ounce. God. Really? And what is the kick of it, which I never... Yeah. How many the keys, you cocksucker? In English, please. Excuse me. In English. How many the keys, you cocksucker? What the? F I love you. I know. Number one, we kid you not, Casablanca. He is looking at you, kid. This Hollywood classic is full of quotable lines. Though some aren't exactly what we think, but that's another story. Play it once, Sam. For all time's sake. I don't know what you mean, Miss Elsa. Play it, Sam. Play as time goes by. However, only one was unscripted. Representing the couple's bond, the famous words are said by Humphrey Bogart multiple times throughout the film. He's looking at you, kid. Turns out Bogey borrowed the phrase from real life. Between takes, he taught Ingrid Bergman to play poker and would often utter the iconic line to her. Who knew you could ad-lib one of the most famous phrases in film history? He's looking at you, kid. I wish I didn't love you so much. Okay, but like, is that not an awesome story? Like Jack Black says in The Holiday, the kid makes the line. So tell us your favorite improv movie moments in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out these other videos to keep yourself occupied.